Welcome everybody, thank you so much for making it. This is a great day. It started with an idea from this guy over here, Jeremy, the godfather. Okay. Hey, what's up? That was interesting. Awesome, guys. What's going on? Sorry, guys. How we doing, brother? How are you guys? <laughs> it's a it's a great day, right? Yeah. Every day is a great day. Yeah. So you yeah. know what? I got I got to match you guys. So I have to take this thing off. Like All right. All right. Well, I like it. Looks like we're still like missing it. a few people. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What's I'm what's stay, happening? I'm sending the list back in to see. <laughs> Oh, the the story of my life. Okay, this uh, uh, the, okay. This is Ahmed. I know Javier. I need to know the, the other. I know you guys, but I I need to refresh the name. There we go. There we go. Well, we're gonna let Javier do and like just start and then okay. go around with everybody. We're just letting people kind of all right jump on here. Okay. I'm getting a lot of delay here. Am I delayed on your guys' end too? No, you're good. You're good. Am I good? Live? Okay, good, guys. So thanks for joining us. We still have a few people that are going to be jumping in. Today, we're going to be talking about 10 main challenges of a shop owner. And I'm going to go ahead and let everybody introduce themselves. Let's start with the top left. Nicole. I am Nicole. I am the CEO of Cellbotics. We are a in-person and online training center here in Atlanta. And uh, we teach cell phone repair, computer repair, phone flip flipping, gaming repair and we have support platforms and everything for technicians that's it that's what i do oh but what am i doing at the expo <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. i came up with the question uh so i actually and am, am assisting the expo and organizing speakers and uh demo people and then we're also uh we have a booth at the expo and i'm also going to be speaking on training at the expo nice nice Okay. Who's who's going next? I'll go. I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback here, guys. Sorry, I have a big delay in my audio. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm Javi Guzman with Mr. Phone Doctor. I attended the Gadget Repair Expo last year, and it was amazing. Actually, it was earlier this year. Um, I, I recommend everybody get out there, check it out in October, and stay on the line, guys. We're going to be talking about some really cool tips and tricks you guys could do in your repair shop. Thank you. My next? Yes. Awesome. Hey guys, I'm Joe Matthews. I own, well, I own several companies, but one of them is my iParis cell phone repair company. And uh, man, I'm just here to encourage you guys and uh, just let you guys know that, uh, man, uh, business can be crazy sometimes, but you're loved and, and I'm gonna try to love on as many people as I can. So come to the expo, let me encourage you. Let me encourage your employees, whoever comes and uh, we're gonna have a great time. All right. Absolutely, yes. Uh, circle. Come on, one of you. Shira, yeah, all right. go ahead. Yes. I'm Kevin Sanders. I'm with Ad Central. Uh, I do sales and account management. Uh, I'm here to discuss the issues shops have and and see if we can get more people at the Gadget Repair Expo as well. Fantastic. Okay, this is Ahmed. I am the uh, CEO of, of uh, Upluck Social and uh, Unlimited Prepaid Distribution. Uh, I do have, you know, I, I can help people with their uh, prepaid needs and their marketing needs, sales training, uh, you know, motivation, whatever you guys need. And I'm excited about the 10 issues that we're going to discuss because uh, let's let's get some solutions. Let's give people some solution and help in small business. And I'm happy to be here. I will be at the uh, Gadget Repair Expo. I will be the moderator. I'm going to be introducing people on, on stage and I will be interacting with everybody. I will be the guy who talks nonstop. If you guys yeah. need anything, I'll be right there. Don't forget, you're giving a full two-hour sales training on the second day 
and bring I'll, your employees. And I'll, I promise you, you attend these two hours and you will it will change your life because I there is never a slow day in my days. Never. I've never had a slow day business, maybe one or two, but it wasn't the, the norm. I'm always busy. I'm always making money. I'm going to show you guys how to make tons of money. Come on over. And now it's all you now. No, this, this way. way. This yeah. way. <laughs> Right. Go for it. <laughs> so, um, last but not least, uh, my name is Shora, and I am um, with Girls Fix It over in Northeast um, Pennsylvania area um, for the uh, my attendant the Atlanta Expo, which was amazing. Um, I met all you guys there, most of you guys there. Um, looking forward to meet some new people. I will also be doing a demo on um, Apple Watch repair. So, looking and looking to share the information Reaper. and you know answer any questions that maybe people who've been doing it is um, challenges. But looking forward to just network with people and help those who are new grow and um, learn from those um, some of the veterans. All right. Good job. Yeah. Good job. All right. So girls shakes it. I like that. Yes. So, All right. Well, we have a topic today. Thank you. Yes. I, thank you. I got a couple of questions. I, I can yeah. I start with a question, then I'll then we'll yeah. go around uh, to talk. Okay. Uh, you guys uh, talk in hand and you know right away. Who's who's dealing with stores owners all the time? That I, I am over here. Anybody Who else? is an owner? <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, but, but you've done. We've done the. You dealt with them, or you own a store, so it's all of us. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what? Let me ask you a question. When you when you when you had retail, or you still own a retail, and you and you and I, for example, I opened always at nine o'clock. What time did I get to work? Around eight. I don't want to say seven thirty because I do that seven thirty, but I always got to the store at half an hour to 45 minutes so I can get some stuff done in the store so I can prepare for the traffic when they come in and enter inventory, uh, ordering things. I never want to mix my operation time, which is like the sales time with my leg work time. If I was one man show, if I had three, four employees, then I come a little early. I let them do whatever they want. But when I'm one man or two and we're busy, I always came a little early so I can have things ready when the store open uh get my orders going get all these things i don't mix work with with this i tried at least the most i th try to organize myself but i used to get early so i can get some stuff done so my store looked good and ready for the traffic when they come in when the customers walked in i started selling them things and i always number one upsell you walk in asking for one thing you're gonna believe it you're gonna walk out with three things there is no such a you know i try my best Call me high pressure, call me whatever, but at least I always push to sell more and offer more stuff. That's one of the things that I wanted to so do. You guys, uh, when you know, when you own your own retail stores, share with me a little bit when you open your store and how you started the day, because the starting of the day is going to determine how the day is going to go. I'll start it off. You know, our our duties to open in the store, we do arrive a little bit early. I have an admin that comes in before the technicians. So I have like a two different departments. The admins handle all the, the customers up front, any kind of customer support. And then our technicians, they come in right at times when it's time to come in for repair. Um, technically admins duties, they come in and they do uh, follow up on any missed calls that we receive during the nighttime or after hours. And of course, uh, follow up with any kind of emails or leads that we do get. So organizing the day is very important because Believe it or not, whenever I have a slow start, late day, the whole day is screwed up. Yeah, like it's it's it doesn't feel right. It doesn't. I'm always catching up, uh, dropping yeah, call. You know, uh, uh, catching up, catching up, ignoring calls, ignoring people. Uh, then the end of the day will be a very heavy on on my shoulders. So starting the day is very important. That's one of the things that I wanted to discuss is waking up early, starting the day early will determine the rest of the day how it's going to go. What do you think, guys? Oh, Chris. Yeah. Chris in the house. <laughs> so what, what I was, is early? I was looking at the what, camera, then I looked down and I look, whoa, who's here? What, what's early? What time is early? No. That's, that's, right. that's a perceptional question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it. Okay, I, know, I know what my early is, but I also know what some of my employees' time early means. So there's different <laughs> definitions of early all the way around. No, I love it, man. Hey, welcome. Chris, Chris with the uh, repair queue. He's the man. Guys, I'll tell you one thing. Whatever, you know. I'm learning more and more about Chris. He's a, he's cool. He knows his stuff, and he's a humble, great product. Go ahead. I'm advertising for you, Chris. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm I an old cool. Two, I want my two percent. <laughs> you got it. You got it. 
I feel left out. I don't have a hat on today. <laughs> I don't have a hat Looking on. Around. Well, I can okay. continue on yeah. on yeah, the topic of some yeah. shop opening duties. Uh, one of the main things I remember doing when I had my store was making sure we contacted any customers that had left devices the prior day. We want to make sure that we get those devices turned around and back in the customer's hands as soon as possible each day. Uh, other than that, I would say, you know, making sure that your staff is focusing on any types of social media presence that you might have in local marketplace groups. Uh, you know, usually your, your, your door doesn't just start flowing with customers immediately. So it's important to do anything that they can to improve the amount of through the door traffic you can get that day. Uh, and those were, those were usually the two primary focuses when we opened up. Man, I got to touch on one thing you said in that, which was uh, speaking to the marketplaces and stuff like that. I'm about to give you guys a dime if you don't already do this. All right. This is the best thing I ever did. I bought all the biggest market groups in my town. I just messaged the admins of them. I was like, hey, I'll give you $100 if you just let me take over this group. And like, and I did this in like four days. I just messaged some people, waited for some replies. People were like, I'm not sure, like, what's going on? I have like 200,000 people locally that are following all those pages, and I own them all, and I can market on all of them, and and no one else can market on them. Facebook groups so, are great for that. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's incredible. The and, and, the, and the little banner at the top, I sell that banner to yeah. other businesses to market their stuff, so it's recurring, man. It's the best $400 I ever spent. Yeah. You spent you you spent a hundred dollars to buy a group. What kind? A Facebook group, a local yard sale group. And most of these groups are fifty thousand followers or more. Yard sale groups. Yeah, it's like a swap shop, like swap shop, but they're local to where I'm at. Yeah, I like. And it. tell you, it's incredible. Like, trust me. I mean, if you said five hundred, I will tell you that's a good deal too. Yeah. To have access yeah, to no, two hundred thousand people, or ten thousand. Yeah, 000 I had two hundred thousand on all the groups combined. Yeah. You wow. want to sell that? You want you want to sell that group? I do not. I do not. It makes me a lot of money. Two hundred dollars, man. I appreciate Double your money. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. That's good. But it's that's easy a dial, to make them if you want to know that. how to make them. I've, yeah, I build up groups that. real quick. Yeah, yeah. It's a really easy okay. way to make them. Awesome, them. awesome. Uh, Nicole, how do you start your day? Oh my gosh, I'm probably up at four a.m. Um, I I used to. Um, like, you know, drink coffee and all that stuff, but I quit coffee. Uh, but I just get up and I just go. I just get ready and I'm out the door as soon as I can to, to get to the office. I don't like to linger around the house too much for some reason. So as soon as I'm up, I'm out. Wow. So you really hit the road around so 4 really hit the road. Yeah, about 5.30. Okay. Um, Shira, you need to turn off your other. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I'm out. I'm out about 5.30. Like, I mean, you know, because I'm always driving. Like, we'll talk mm -hmm. early in the morning about business and... You're like, holy crap, you're in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember, my office is like an hour or so away. But then I like being by myself. And I like that hour and a half drive because it gives me time to listen to audiobooks because I do a lot of personal development. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of like just all kinds of stuff from the law of attraction to like business, you know, Tony Robbins or Grant Cardone, whatever material I can consume. I do in that hour and a half there and hour and a half back home each day. That's what I listen to. Yes. I love it. Okay. Okay. No, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. That's pretty that's pretty similar to mine. I don't get up at 4 30. Uh mm -hmm. I go to bed at 4 30. Uh but I don't I don't require a lot of sleep. I go off about four hours. Uh that's just how my, my body works with ADHD. Uh we don't need a lot. We just roll. We just keep going. So keep going. Uh, yeah, I just need a good Red Bull and I'm well actually Red Bull put me to sleep, but uh anyway, uh I we moved about 30 minutes away from where we're at now. And the bet that's been the best thing for us. I used to live like a mile from the shop. Um, but I mean, well, I'm, I've got a pretty big building now. It's 22,000 square foot, but wow. yeah, it's huge. Wow. I own a block actually. So I tell people that's my block. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. It's cool. it's awesome, I'll take right? guys outside. We'll go for a tour. It'll take a while. Uh, we got awesome. a CrossFit gym in the back, go. but anyway, um, I also lost 149 pounds. Too. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, so to that, man, that time where I can pop in a do a podcast or, or listen to anything uh, that's uh, I don't I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. I don't do anything for entertainment like I'm on a mission. And that is to change my family's 
uh, tree from poverty to uh, a, a future with uh, uh, prosperity. So I'm on a mission. I don't have time for for Netflix and whatever. Right. Like, I, I, <laughs> like there's stuff that's got to be uh, done and, and somebody's got to do it and nobody else is going to do it. And it's going to start with me and, we, and we're going to change the family history uh, starting right. with me. Oh, I love it. We grew oh up gosh. very, very, very poor, but we won't be very poor when I leave. Right. That's <laughs> awesome. That's that's a good motivation, man. Family is important. Family Absolutely. is important. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, uh, girl, fix it. Yes, yeah, Shura. It's Shura. Sorry about that, guys. Shura, yes. Yeah, breaking up in the intro a little bit. Yeah, for me, um, I'm not a 6 a.m. I'm more so I get to stop um, about an hour earlier. Um, generally, what I I do is kind of texting any customers who's dropped off devices, replying to any quotes or emails that come in overnight because I used to do them at night during dinner. So now mm -hmm. I kind of cut it off at some point. Don't reply, you know, to every email price quote that comes in overnight, but focus on getting right. that done in the morning. Um, as well as something I didn't knew, I started recently, like two months ago, was any customer who um, picked up their device the, the, the day before, send them a text message if they have not left me a Google review. Um, just send them that message from, um, you know, repair desk, you know, a plug for them. And, um, you know, just to kind of keep help getting my, my reviews up. I'm only um, at almost 100 now, so I'm kind of aiming to get there soon. You got 100 wow. reviews? I'm close. I'm like 96, 97. Send me That's your uh, send me your review. Uh, you send me your Google. I'll leave you a review. There you go. Okay. There you go. Yeah. No, yeah, like, like, I always want legit ones. Like no, I, legit, don't want sure, review, um, I don't care if it's legit or not. Put it on my thing if it's five star, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know what? A, a review is 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 a whole the, the personality, the business, the you know the service. Yeah. I can I, I, we we met at this at the show. I can I remember you. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you. You were the the gadget, right? We spoke you and I as well, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at you, you opened the store. You were talking about it and now you got it done, right? Yeah. Well, no, I think you had it then. This year. Yeah. This year. Yeah. It's, it'll be a year and all. Oh, so, okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. How was it? Disclaimer. She did take our course. I'm just, you know, yes, not, not saying anything, you know? No, that's, that's good. No, no. That I'm name proud is of so dope. <laughs> no, Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know how that's not taken, but right, right, right. She I, did. I want to come work for you now. <laughs> I'm in Pennsylvania. It's, the weather isn't too bad right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. No, I'm I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. That's that's awesome, man. That's Super awesome. Cool. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be selling them the new prepaid services in about a month or two. I'm with you guys a lot, so I'm excited yes. about that. Services. You're well. You're you're welcome. You're welcome. Are you coming to that to that uh, the expo that one in uh, October? Yeah. She's yeah, actually I'm demoing how to refurb Apple watches. Look at you. You and I will be on the stage together. That's awesome. Come on, down. Come, come on down. down. come on down to Texas. Yes, come on down to Texas. Chris, how was is, how is your day? How was how do you start your day? How do I start my day? Let's see. I, I, uh, <laughs> you got a hat. I do, actually. <laughs> so I, I, I have a bad habit. I, I, I drink I drink Coke. I'm a Coke fiend. Um, not not that kind of Coke. The one in the red bottle. <laughs> um, <laughs> not the fun but, one. Uh, I, I get up in the mornings. I'm usually up around, oh, six six thirty sometimes earlier because my wife when during the school year i'm up earlier because my wife gets up uh much much earlier um uh, but i i get up I'm, I'm i'm one of those i've got a shower I, I can't work without showering so get up first thing i do is get in the shower and um then i'll uh i'll head down to my local qt plug for qt i got i've got to get my 32 ounce uh, qt coca-cola um i come home and i usually consume about uh 30 minutes of, uh, of news, local news, just to see what's going on. And then uh, I come in and I start, I, I start responding to emails. It's a little bit different, you know, a little bit different than you guys. I'm not a repair shop. Um, you know, we're selling repair queue software, uh, depot software, mm -hmm. um, connecting our, our uh, service providers to the three, the third party authorizers that we're working with, uh, which are a lot of the insurance providers and, and, uh, OEMs, and uh, and so that's what I do. I get I get working on I get I get going on that, responding to emails from that come through the night before, um, and then uh, tracking through all the leads that come through, working with my team, uh, qualifying leads, ensuring that uh, you know we get good qualified leads that come through. We're following up with those guys. Um, a lot of what we do, uh, as well as uh, we've gotten, we we started working on account based marketing. Um, so we're identifying companies that we feel are a good fit 
for our products, we're, then we're going in and, and we're actually identifying who those individuals are that we need to target. You know, it's, it's not always the CEO. It might be the, the uh, CIO or the individual responsible for finance. It might be the individual responsible for IT, right? Um, and, and, or some cases it's the operations guys that are, you know, running their operations and they, they realize their software isn't actually, uh, you know, supporting what they're trying to do, or it's not allowing them to grow. So that's what, that's what we do. We, we pull together account-based marketing and really target, uh, those emails, uh, to those specific people in the value add that we can deliver to each one of them. And it's different for every one of them, right? Finance guys looking at, you know, how can I reduce costs? The operations guy looking at is looking at how he can create efficiencies. Those two things are really the same in one, but they're, they're both different people thinking about it different ways. Right. And then uh, the IT guy is looking at how he can simplify his um, operations from an, from an IT management, you know, hosting backups, administration, all that good stuff. Awesome. So that's, that's, a, that's what I'm doing all day. That sounds really technical. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's it, it, you know for me it's a lot of i've never i've not always been in sales um i was in operations for a long time uh working for some large three the three pls and um worked for a couple oems and had a lot of a lot of fun working for those guys but i tell you what working in sales and working in reverse logistics um there used to be a i used to support a big wireless carrier and every every quarter we get together and do our quarterly reviews and they did. There's one guy who was on the quality side. He's like, "Please, when are you going to st- get out of operations? It's such a nightmare. Reverse logistics is such a nightmare. You're always dealing with fires." I'm like, "I love it. I love it. You're always dealing with something different, right?" I think, you know, the guy with ADHD, right? You, you always want something different. You're you're like a like a squirrel going down the going all down day, the tree baby. over all here, day. over there, over yeah. here, over there. Right. So, so we're gonna start on, wherever the nuts at. So so we're exactly. gonna start on our topic. Okay. So we have a topic oh. that we've posted. Yeah, so ahead. every call we're gonna have a topic. Of course, we always want to talk about the expo, right? Okay. So the expo is coming up in um, October thirteenth to the thirteenth uh, and fourteenth in San Antonio, uh, Texas. The tickets are only ninety nine dollars. Gadget repair. Um, let me show that one real quick. Uh, GadgetRepairExpo.com. Everybody on here is going to be there and a ton of other people giving amazing value. We actually give true trainings, not just watch. Uh, you're actually going to be learning things in the demos. We have multiple speakers that are going to be providing real, real value. Uh, we have, you know, like a business credit, how to get loans as a shop owner and as a technician and how to use them. So we actually have someone that specializes in that that's going to come speak um we have uh motivation sales training uh talking about how to train your team uh, so there's a lot of different topics that you guys won't want to miss you'll want to make sure that you come to the gadget repair expo we also have some really big surprises that we're going to be announcing over the next few weeks i can't really say anything right now but definitely get your ticket and hotel and flight and get that out of the way so our topic for today's live is 10 struggles shop owners have and how to fix them so Anybody want to start with one struggle that you see a shop owner has, and then we can kind of talk about how to fix it? I'll start it off. I'd say training. <clears throat> you know, training is going to be key. You want to make sure that you can delegate tasks and not be in the trenches working all the time. You know, mm-hmm. especially if you're trying to scale and grow and, and get more business, you know, there's only so much that you as an individual and an owner can do um, on a day, you know, on a daily basis. So training is going to be very, very key. Hey, Avi, with, um, with, with, with training, it's, it's like standardizing processes, right? Correct. Yeah, definitely. You got to have processes right laid out. Everyone follows it. And that way it's all systematic. Yeah. You guys probably know, I could probably go on a rant about training, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm glad you said it because when I say it, everybody thinks, well, of course, cause you're a training center, but no, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's more than just having your employees sit and, and teach someone something they know it's understanding that training has to be delivered in a certain way but you also have to have those processes and things i I work with a lot of owners through consulting like i do one-on-one consulting with owners and that's like right at the top of the list i'll talk to owners and they're like i'm just putting out fires all day long like i can't even get let, let alone create new things for my company um and so it's like really really important to get your processes down which is you know what i help them with but once you get your 
the part of getting your processes down is getting all of the stuff in your company documented that people do. So then if you lose that person or you want to grow, you have that procedure and process documented, you know? Yeah. So SOPs, you can should, SOPs should definitely be a more standard procedure in the average repair shop. You know, I think with the, mm -hmm. the barrier to entry in our industry, uh, not to say anyone's unqualified, but you know, a lot of us, when we open our stores are new to business in general and learning how to document SOPs creates a much healthier atmosphere for existing employees and new employees. So I feel like that word sometimes or acronym is, is intimidating when you sure. say SOPs. Guys, if you're watching and you're like, oh my God, SOPs, it's literally just like a word document or yeah. there's softwares and you just type like how to open the store. Like it's not, it's not as hard as you think. We go a step further at Subotics. We actually record a person doing it and drop it into a cloud folder named that task. So it goes like a step further than just the document. Uh, so it's, it's not as hard when you say SOP. Sometimes people get scared of that, but it's not scary. It's just documenting every single procedure that every person does. So the company can operate as its own entity, you know? Right. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say just that, Nicole, you, you can make it super simple. In fact, what we did was we just went around and we recorded each process as well, but we put a dictation uh, thing when it recorded. So it just typed everything out. And then I just went in at the end of the day and edited a few things that I wanted to make sure that they knew. And I put in a couple of links for the videos. And so anytime that they like wanted to like, how do you open the store? Well, click this link and watch me open the store. How do you want to, how do you do the, how do you do the money at the beginning of the day? Well, click this link and it'll show you how to do the money at the end in the morning. How do we sweep the floor? I'm going to show you a video on how we sweep the there floor. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Because yes. the number one thing you got to know in a shop is your employees, you may think they know how to do things, but they do things their way. And you as an owner, you need to learn to teach them how to do it your way, or you're going to be in, conf in conflicting uh, spaces all the time because they're going to think they're doing something the right way because that's how they do it but it's not your way. Well, even uh, in training, we learn as a trainer that people hear you differently than what you think you said the way you said it. So yeah. also it's the perception of hearing. You say something and then somebody goes, Does, you know, I didn't tell you that. Well, yeah, you did because the way you said it, didn't they didn't receive it properly. So that, mm -hmm. you know, that alone is where you get like this communication issue. Yeah. So, so just sweep the floor or go clean the floor. Does that mean sweep it, mop it? Like, what does that mean? How far so, do I go in yeah. every room or here to here? Like, what does that mean? So <laughs> do I have to leave all the make it, like the relationships with you and your employees or whoever else really, really smooth SOPs are like, right. I feel like I, I sound like Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, definitely, guys. One thing I know for me, like, um, it's, it was it seemed very intimidating to make the SOPs and do these process and procedures. But once you go through a few employees, you quickly realize that you have to do the same things over again and teaching them and training them and just having those, um, you know, oper standard operations procedures just makes it a little bit easier when you're bringing on a new person, you're onboarding them, you know, you can kind of have a consistent process of onboarding and training, even though it may seem daunting to do it. But I would say start at the basic level of maybe just, you know, I don't do two a month um, just to build them up, you know, don't let it yeah. overwhelm you. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So I'll go next. Um, well, I wanted to talk about somebody's comment here. So I think it's Cassie. Could be Casey, right? Casey. Cassie? Casey. Casey? Casey? Okay. Um, I've been creating videos of every phone repair issue, like all the things I've done wrong or things that have randomly happened during repair. I teach my techs all the things that could happen during repairs. That's awesome. That's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. Um, okay. All right. So I had a, an issue that shops had. I had something really good and I completely forgot. Oh, growth. So creating a career path for employees. That's a big issue that shops have because you have like one shop and then you're like, I'm going to hire you. This is your job. You know, like there's no, there's nothing else to it. Right. So I feel like it's, it's almost the responsibility of an owner. If you're going to start hiring people to have a growth mentality and it doesn't mean that you have to grow out like more locations, you can grow up, like take on B2B work, you know, you can, you know, get larger contracts, things like that. But you need to have something that people can grow up into. Or that's, that's one of the reasons why you can't retain people because you don't have a career path for them. What do you guys think? Yes. 
Absolutely. Set, 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 setting up goals basically for 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 clients. No well, career you. path. You know, if you I, don't I, grow I, and you just have one shop and you hire someone and just expect that to be their life working for you for $12 an hour for the rest of their life. That's unrealistic that you think that they're going to stay with you. You have to be committed to growth. And like I said, it doesn't have to be more locations. It can be up. It can be bigger contracts, B2B, bigger facility, you know, but you have to create a career path within your company. If you want to keep people because nobody wants to be stuck at a $10 an hour job. First off, we shouldn't be paying them that much anyways, because nobody can live off of that anywhere. Okay. It's an insult to pay someone $10 an hour to work. I don't care what they're doing. Uh, but that's another topic. Uh, and, but you want to create a, a career path for them because how are you going to retain them? Of course, right. they're going to learn and go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. you have you, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, and, but you want to create a, a career path for them. Oops. What is that? That, that was Jeep. <laughs> Someone... That was me? Feedback. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So, 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 everybody, so basically, they need to have a plan, uh, a, a plan of attack. I mean, where's the growth? Where they're going? Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. How do you encourage path. the people? Yeah. Encourage the people who are around you. Lo- I mean, love them like, and love them and treat them like they're never going to leave. And right. I think the big thing that gets in the, in the minds of business owners and things like uh, that and entrepreneurs is like fear. I think fear drives that. Like, oh, I don't want, to teach them everything. I don't give all the secrets away. I don't want to encourage them too much because there's like a fear of like they're going to leave and go start their own thing and put me out of business. Well, I mean, most of the time that's not true. And like, right. and the only reason they leave is because you were a jerk the whole time. And so in my, in my companies and I have eight of them, but uh, in all of my companies, I do not hire people and call them employees. They become my part of my family. And I treat them as such. And there's a and there's and there's a lot of people I've I've had or I've argued with on both sides of this with lots of business owners of, you know, don't make it too personal, like whatever. But for me, it is personal. And then I don't, and, and there's nothing there's nothing personal about business. No, that's bull. Like you're just letting fear drive that. Uh, but right. for me, like I go to these guys, kids birthday parties like they show up to like our stuff like we're, we're hanging out on the on, on Saturday at the lake or whatever. All of them are coming and hanging out like, you know, like we spend real time with each other. And I think what that does is it creates this. The bond, bond. Yeah, it, it creates a yeah. bond that's like more than like, oh, frick, I have to go back into work. But now it's like, oh, man, I get to go into work with people I love to be around and the environment that I'm around. So when you create a culture of that and uh, and also you pay them well, like, you know, if I'm going to love say I love them. Well, like that comes financially too, man. Like, right. right. You can't be traveling year round and your staff are making $10 an hour and can't pay rent. Yeah. While you're like showing not, all your pictures of you on the beach somewhere. Right. Like it's right. not right. And you wonder why your team have animosity to you. I've yeah. had owners that are like in the Bahamas and, and they're looking to, you know, hire someone and offering them $12 an hour. And they've, they've got all this experience and everything. And it's like, literally like this has happened. And I'm like, what? Like, I can't pay them more. You're like on vacation. What do you mean you can't pay more? Maybe you need to stop spending so much of your revenue and put it back into your employees. So then you can grow and then you can take more. We don't take first. We take last. Yeah. That's what an owner and a leader does anyways. I guess if you're just, yeah. A, Here's the know. most beautiful thing about that mm-hmm. is when you become someone who is generous, the more you give out, I'm, it's the weirdest thing. The more that you give, the more you return. You're I don't know. Back. I don't yeah. know how that works. Yep. It doesn't sound like it does, but I promise you, <laughs> try it. The more you are generous, the more you give to someone, they're going to get back. Like if your spouse, the more you, the more time you give to them, the more love you give to them, guess what you're going to get back? It's you not hate. Them. You're going to get a lot more love back. <laughs> right? Same with right? your relationship with a friend or wh- however it is. But man, the best thing I ever learned in my life was be stupid generous. And by being stupid generous and feeling like I'm giving away the house and the home, like I got the house, the home, the boat. That the, the block, they every, like you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy how it works. Like, it's, it's I love that, that, hey, go I'm ahead. sorry, I love that you mentioned that growing doesn't have to be more locations. So, when I had my initial store, you know, we started from mobile, we went into a mall booth, and then we realized that like a physical location would be better than the mall just because of certain mall issues that we had. Uh, but I didn't want to have multiple locations, and at the time, you know, this was five or six years ago uh lcd refurbishment was a was a hot market so we expanded into lcd refurbishment for our own store 
And after getting good enough at it, we started offering it for other stores. So that allowed some of my techs that took interest in that work to grow into managing our refurbishment lab. And then as we built more connections through the LCD refurbishment, we built corporate connections and then we were able to get repair contracts, you know, with corporate connections. And so by going through that growth, uh, I, it, which actually led to closing the store down because the entire team was more interested in the B2B services and growth in general, because mm -hmm. we had more opportunity, you're absolutely correct that paying them more and giving them a career path that had, you know, from diagnostic to tech to management to potentially finding us more B2B customers gave them a lot of opportunity to to want to come to work and fight for some more. Right. You know? So makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. So what is another issue that you guys see? Or if you are watching, can you comment below and we can talk about that too if you guys have any issues? Uh, one thing that I uh, not to be afraid to try new things like new products. Like mm -hmm. if you if you're a repair shop and you're not selling phones, why are you not selling phones? If you're a repair shop and, and you're buying offering them. and buying them, why are you not doing this? What uh, accessories? I believe it or not, there is some shops till today they don't even sell accessories. They just want to fix phones. I mean, you you, you gotta complete the circle. So if you sell are, Aco. Someone says sell Aco. Yeah. Anything so service. Sign up for Aco, but any, actually sell it. That's the any, key. Anything service. Awesome. Uh, exactly. Anything service the customer that carry a phone, anything in this phone over here, I should be able to service it because it's the same customer. I'm not selling vegetables here. I'm selling telecom. And anything sure, goes with the telecom. Yeah. So that's something. They, they get scared. They just see copycat. They want to see, oh, the other guy is making money fixing phones. I'm just going to fix phones. Well, right. sell accessories. Add this, add that, you know. Be be your own uh, unique uh, combination. You know what I mean? Or fix or, drones or laptops or market directly towards gaming computers and not just computer repair because that market might catch more keywords. Uh, yeah. Making, you know, you have the social media is right in front of us. So we have all the opportunity in the world to tell people all of the services we do or can or want to offer. And it costs almost nothing to do so. So we should be taking full advantage of that. Right, right. Uh, that's that's another thing. The social media will tap into this in a minute. But yeah, um, Ashura, you kind of raised your hand. Did you want to add something? No, I was just saying, like, you know, Apple has been amazing. You know, it's been a, a great product we've been offering our customers, and a lot of them like it um, a lot, you know, compared you're to You're selling it. So you yeah. didn't just sign up, but you're actually selling it. Yeah. That's important. You have to sell it. You can't just sign up for it. You have to actually physically sell it. Yes. So someone is asking, Joe, how's Aco for you? So if both of you want to give insight on your stores. Yeah, you know, I yeah. jumped on Aco. gosh, I, I guess when Brian first started – started with him he gave me a call and uh brian i heard if you guys know i mean sure i think probably everyone knows who brian is brian yeah brian brian yeah uh, yeah we know brian, brian ahern uh, yeah. Yeah. ahern yes. 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 Say his brian name? ahern he's amazing he's a little ahern i love brian man he's awesome i think he's great yeah uh <laughs> yeah anyway uh we sell it in our store and uh man we were so we did services for Asurion and stuff like that so mm -hmm. this would Thank God I'm not anymore. So if anybody's with Asurion, I'm not, I mean, go for it. It just wasn't for us. Uh, so it was just difficult. So Asurion made you, um, you know, you had to go to the place of business or to a home, which we felt like a super creeper. Uh, plus we didn't know what we we're going to walk into. Uh, so, uh, but with Asurion, I mean, Akko, it just gave us a chance to like bring everything home. And uh, it was like the home base for like, hey, we fixed this stuff. So you don't have to ship to anybody. You don't have to go anywhere else. Like you can just come to us. We'll not only fix it, but we'll fix it. We'll sell you another one and we'll give you some accessories too. And so we actually added this as an option plan for like when we fix your device um, for an additional whatever, uh, you can get ACO. In fact, the first 30 days is free. And so we just like put that as part of the repair sales pitch. And so mm -hmm. we, and you know, hey, if you don't like it, cancel. Nobody does, but you know, it's, it's a great way to get them on board uh, right away. Yeah. And and people love it. So it's not something like I had to really try to sell very hard. It's like, dude, for $12, you can come get your phone fixed. And you got the iPhone 13. You don't want to pay for what that costs to get it fixed. And right. you, you can do it for, 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 I think it's like, I don't know, $79 or something like that. Alco yeah. will actually be at the expo talking about their insurance. So you guys can get signed up there or come and talk to them in person. 
yeah. I do know that it is profitable. So Very. But you, you have to actively promote it in your stores to your customers. It's not that hard, you know, from the people that are here that are doing it. Um, but you can't just sign up. You have to actively promote it in your stores, but it will. And we give a commission to our employees as well. If they sell a plan, they get commission off that too. That's, so that, it gives them another that's great. incentive that's great. to want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. You know, like uh, Ahmed had mentioned earlier, you know, selling additional services, it's, yeah. it's upsell, right? You got to yes. take advantage of every door swing that comes in and maximize uh, you know, your, your sales to each one of those customers, right? Whether yes. that's upselling insurance, selling accessories, taking a trade in um, and, and selling a, a refurb device. Um, all, all of those, all of those things drive, drive incremental revenue, right? A lot of people market like outside of the store to get mm -hmm. people in the store and they forget to market to people while they're in the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can't always rely on your employees, no matter how good they are to, to always mention the tempered glass or always mention the bundle or always mention something. So you have to take advantage of that. Just like you said, marketing everything you offer in the store is yeah. required. Absolutely. Chris, I have yeah. a question for you. I have a question for you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Um, at, at Repair Q, uh, can you see every employee, what they do? Can you set up commission to employees from your modules? Yeah, yeah. So there's there's commissions reports. You, there's a, a daily dashboard that every employee, when they log in, they get to see what that dashboard looks like, what their sales have been, um, and and what their what their goals are, how they're performing. If there's any devices that are, you know, past due uh, in terms of repair time, turnaround time. So those there's a lot of configuration that you as the store store owner have access to. Uh, to drive, you know, those upsells um, and manage those commissions that go along with it. Nice. Somebody nice. made a good comment here. My shop has tournament gaming rooms in it. I am partnered with Cell Helmet, and I created my own brand of cases called Case Easy, pronounced Casey. Casey. <laughs> yeah, a Shurion, a scam. I ran multiple e break I fix locations till till the owner basically abused and used me. Oh, deep. Ah, that's uh, <laughs> congratulations you know on that, going uh, by yourself, Casey. Well, I, yes, at least sorry, you made it. Casey. Yeah, yeah, Casey, good job. I mean, I'm sorry that this went through, but what well, you, you learned and you made it, and you're doing better now. <laughs> you know, I, and that's so helmet, that's so helmet opportunity. That's that's great of taking, taking, I have a surprise, everybody. I have a surprise. Uh oh, uh oh, it's Tony. Hey. Hey. We, have a, we have a device question, and I wanted to get Tony on the phone and see. I got it like that. He's Tony like, in the house, baby. <laughs> You are so pretty, man. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the guy, the guy in Florida, he's driving his convertible, got his sunglasses, got his beard, and everything. Like, well, what's what's? I mean, he's living the life. Look at the <laughs> sun. Look at the sun. Look, Look how beautiful it is, man. I wish I was there. <laughs> what's good? Hey, you do, what's yes. good? Man? So Tony is a GSM warehouse. He also owns a bunch of locations with his franchise company. Um, but I wanted to address this question from Laura. It says, how can I start buying devices with minimal working capital? Okay. So Tony is the device man. If you want to buy and sell devices, this is the man you need to talk to. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. So um, there is some good news, actually, um, which uh, took place officially today. There is a new company. It's called Olympus, Olympus uh, 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 Linden. Um, I posted a link a couple of days ago on my Facebook page. Um, they will give you up to $50,000 uh, uh, line of credit. And we do accept that company um, as, uh, uh, as a vendor. Uh, we've had one, uh, one transaction earlier today because we were trying to set it up. So they would give you ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You can pay it off within 30 days. Uh, same as cash, no interest. Uh, that's zero capital. Your question was with as minimum as low capital. Yeah. So I'm yeah. giving yeah. you an option to start with zero capital. So um, yeah. Lind uh, Olympus, Linden, it takes a few minutes to apply. They give you 10, 20, 30, $40,000. And you can buy, you can message me, call me, or go to our website, gsmwarehouse.com, to place your order. And uh, you just choose pay with uh, uh, Olympus. Uh, Olympus? 
Olympus. O L. I don't know. Olympus. <laughs> I'm trying to look on your page for the post, but I can. Uh, I was like a week, exactly a week ago. I'll, I'll send you the link. Right okay. Yeah. Um, they um they then pay us as GSM Warehouse the total amount of of order. So let's say they place a seventy five hundred dollar order. They send us that money. We ship you the phones, and you get to pay them within thirty days, same as cash. Or there's other options uh, that they have. Now, to answer your question, to start with the lowest capital, we do not require any uh, um, any uh, minimum quantity. So yes, you can go to gsmwarehouse.com to place an order for one phone, and yes, you will get the uh, uh, wholesale distribution prices. Um, um, yes, we can ship it overnight. Um, yes, we have ground shipping. And uh, yes, we have a 90 day warranty, even if you order, uh, even if you order one device. Nice. Okay. I just put the name of the company. Thank you, Cheryl. She gave me the name Olympus lending. So for any of you who want to know how to buy devices with little to no capital, because you can use a loan, uh, to get it, which, you know, you have to be smart with yep. throw some money back at it. You definitely need to grow. Don't you know, be smart with it because loans can also cause you issues if you're not smart about managing them, but right. it can be very worth it, but you need to manage your money properly. Yeah. I can give you hey. some of our clients who started doing one phone at a time. And, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a famous guy that's, that's in the groups and, and uh, was with us on the panel a few days ago. Uh, he started buying phones one like pre-ordering uh, uh, per customer. So he would, Tell the customer if you want it overnight, he would order one phone a day or two phones a day. Then uh, recently he started stacking up, you know, 10 phones a day and 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 uh, um, and more to, to keep in stock. You know what I mean? That's what I was going to say. I think if you have a minimal amount of capital, buy what you can and try and reinvest all of the profit from those devices, kind of like a bankroll for device sales in general. If you can avoid being greedy for the first few weeks or months that right. you have a smaller amount of capital, it'll pay tenfold in the future to where you could kind of take dividends from that bankroll. Exactly. Joe Matt, one of those customers, Joe Matthew started small. I remember when we had a couple of thousand dollar orders years ago. Now we've done, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollar orders and then, you know, a lot of phones in stock and, and that's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Tony's the OG. So yeah, he takes right. care of everybody. So if you need phones, a, man, call the dude up, he's got it. Yep. He's got it. Yeah. Um, so, we have another question here. Does I own hey, cell phone repair in Nashville, Tennessee? Keep watching Mr. Doctor videos. Where can I buy used good iPhones as wholesale to resell retail at my store? Bam, Tony again. Hey, well, down there on the bottom left, you're looking at the man right there. Check it out. Check That's him out. Right. His yes. website oh, is some warehouse. He goes, I'll put he's a got banner up. ready How to go, that? and they're backed by 90 day warranty. So check out his site. I'll put a, I'll put and, it up here for you guys. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There, like I said, there is no minimum quantity. So like Nicole said, Matthew and Joe said, everybody, you know, there, you can buy as many as you want. You can start it as low as you want. Uh, 90 day warranty for whoever dealt with me knows and understands that you can buy one phone or you can buy a thousand phones. You still get my awesome customer service. <laughs> he really does have awesome. He does. And he is he awesome. does. When yeah, he I was does, a flea yes. on a wall, the guy would, I would, He'd message me at 11 o'clock at night, and I'm like, dude, when do you sleep, man? Like, don't, you don't have to answer me back. I was just messaging you late. Like, he's at the like, club at 11 oh, man, let's get it figured out right now. I can ship it out right now. I got five more minutes. I was just talking like, to Joe. Like, hey, just making sure how you doing. You're doing good. Everything good with you? You know, you got to stay humble. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, some, something I wanted to throw out there, too. Um, for those that are buying devices, right, on trade-in, taking trade-ins uh, or managing any of that, there's a couple companies that I, we're working with that I don't know if you guys are aware of. Have you, have you guys heard of Incentive? What is it called? I haven't heard of it. Incentive. So N and then Incentive. And, and what they do, they basically offer um, gift cards. <laughs> Grecian formula, this Tony. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's, it's Jeremy Goldie. I mean, you know, we got to post it. Um, but you mean like in, a buyback like program, right? Yeah, well, not not necessarily. I guess you could call it a buyback program, but really what happens is Incentive offers gift cards uh, for trade-in to your customers. And and what's nice about that is is they're because it's a gift card, they can actually get in some cases up to up to 
uh, 120% of what you were going to offer. So if they walked in and, and you were going to offer $100 in cash, but they're willing to take a gift card through incentive, you can actually give them $120. And it doesn't cost you, the owner, anything more. Nice, nice. And, and there's, another, there's another company, um, Selby, that we're partnered with that um, offers a, a – uh, basically, it's a, it's a marketplace where they're buying devices on the back end. So if, you're, if you have a customer that walks in the door and you're, you're trying to manage your cash, right, and they want to do a trade-in, but you don't have the cash to do it, what's nice is Selby has with this marketplace is going to immediately offer you a cash value for that device – following their trade-in program so that you can still offer that customer trade-in so that they can spend money in your store and it, there's no money that comes out of your pocket. You basically print out a label, slap that label on the device, ship it to ship it to the buyer, and Selby manages all the transactions. Now, some of that money still comes out of your pocket. You have to, you have to be able to fund that for <clears throat> seven to 10 days while they're processing and, and getting you your money back, right? Because you're going to give the money to the customer immediately. But it's all guaranteed and, and all managed. So it's a Selby is a great partner to have if you're managing any type of trade-ins and you're looking for a marketplace where you don't want to buy, necessarily buy an HTC, HTC device that's going to sit on your shelf, right? Product that you can't flip easily. You know, something that's five, six, seven years old that you know you don't have an opportunity to sell, but you still want that customer to spend that money in the store. You can work with Selby so that, that you're basically saying, look, I'm going to, I'll still give you a trade in on that device, give them the cash. So they're spending that money in your store. Um, and then that money's not necessarily coming out of your pocket the long term. You're right. just financing it for a short period of time. I know that this comment's pretty big and I want to address it because it's, it's you know, it's taken up the screen. Uh, but Walter says, one of the best thing I've learned from doing business is investing yourself like customer service skill or industry of your business. I do a lot of micro soldering repairs. And sometimes because the the time learning how your business operate is key uh, and be very good to your customers. So I want to touch on something about micro soldering. Um, you know, we haven't initially announced it, but there is you want and trust me, you want to go to the Gadget Repair Expo because you are going to learn a lot about micro soldering. So we still have some things to announce, but if you've ever been interested in micro soldering, you'll definitely want to get your ticket and soon we will have some announcements, but. Can you add a few you. websites that uh, add on to Chris uh, that yeah. he said, I, th yeah. I think yeah. every store owner should have. What those. is the name of it? Biz, uh, biz, biz, B. Selby. Sell. Sell. C E L L B I E. Okay. Dot com. And uh, yep. And I'm just gonna. I I would say um, add on to that. I would I would um, for a buyback operation use the website uh, letter U S E L L U uh, Sell dot com. U what is it S E L L dot com? Yep, yep. That gives you the value of the phone for the buyback. <laughs> so if you don't know how much to pay for this phone, this website tells you how much to pay for it. And, and uh, what is Josh Hample's, um, is it, is it the consignment? What company is? Oh, the consignment phones. Yeah. That's, um, what is the name of that? The one that was with us on the show. Ahmad Mormeno. What's going on? It's, it's Josh Hample, voice. right? Uh, with, uh, the consignment. Certified something. Certified cell. Certified there we go. Sale. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And the other website I would recommend is probably uh, there's multiple websites, but the one that I could pop in my head is Sick W. Um, that could confirm that the phone IMEI or serial number is reported lost or stolen before you buy it. Um, Tony is also going to be a speaker, and he's going to be giving a training on how to profit, how to sell devices profitably, like how to yeah. actually do this right so he'll be speaking for 30 minutes at the gadget repair Absolutely. expo and that's all included in the 99 dollar ticket yeah all of it it's not extra that's worth get there guys get here. there be tony <laughs> i mean and then you got on its two hour sales training i mean just just that alone is um, worth that is more than 99 i mean uh, tony's got to wear the glasses though tony's got to wear he's got to wear the glasses i'm driving and i, I can't see in the sun look florida's beautiful here it's like sunny out here. It's the best weather. <laughs> it's bright. It, hey, man, it's bright everywhere you're at, right? It's sunny everywhere you go. 89 degrees. 
Oh, yeah, man. Very good. We're very in Texas. Nice. It's 400. I I'll, yeah. take the, I'll take the fall. I don't want that hot summer again. Florida. Where in Texas? Where are you in Texas? Northeast right. Texas. Yeah, we're in Northeast yeah. Texas. Right. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in North Central. Just north what, of what? Dallas. Oh, cool. What part? Yeah. Um, just north of Louisville. Okay. Actually, I'll be in Louisville that, uh, Thursday, Tuesday. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Got to pick up a sign. All right. Um, okay, well, we're kind of wrapping up. we got about five more minutes. Is there anything else that you guys want to add in here and tell people? I'm up. I haven't heard you speaking. I have to hear you speaking. Who? I'm on. I can't oh. hear you. He's, he's all... speaking in mute. You're mute? He's, all, he's on mute. <laughs> it looked like whole time. Really can you, can you hear me now? Can you yeah. hear me now? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. I said marketing, marketing, marketing. <laughs> Not enough marketing. Guys, you got to market, market, market. You got to put Hey, tell them about your new thing. Can you tell them yet? I don't want to. I, I okay, it's, it's not. No, no, no. I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. There is a new release coming from me, and I just, you know, uh, there is going to be three three ways that we you can we we're going to service our clients. We're going to market for their their business if it's expensive. I'm going to give them the tools to market their business so they can build their own content and everything, and auto posting and all these things and scheduling for the next six months. Uh, the third way. If you are strong in marketing and you want to be a marketing agency, I'm going to teach you how to become a marketing agency like me, and I'm going to give you all the tools that to, to help you. So great. I, I'm That's giving awesome. you all the options, guys. Sure. I want I want sure. people, you know, I want Sign to share. How about that? Sign I want to share everything. Sign me up. Sign me up. No, you got it, man. I have a tool. He's the right man. Now. You he got brought it. you up today when we were talking about it. He was like, yeah. Tony. I, clo I'm like I, I closed a seven figures deal. So I yeah. have to make this happen for everybody. I spend everything. You know what? I if you want to have your own local marketing company, he's yeah. going to teach I, you how to do it. I'm going to teach. He's yeah. successful at it. He, he does I, I, it. I, and, and listen, I'm not going to limit it to wireless. It's going to be open for everything. Right now, I'm I'm yeah. servicing roofers, electricians, lawyers. Uh, I, I mean, that's what you're going to be able to do. Full-blown marketing agency. You want to learn? And the show, we're going to talk about it. I want to. I want to learn too. Okay. Anything wait. else? I don't know. We have. Some I'll be more there. Comments. Yeah. You, you can make Nobody. money off. You can make money off doing repairs. You can keep traffic when you do prepaid services, and you That's can right. make profit off devices. Look, That's Jeremy right. Goldie said, "Sign me up, Ahmed." No, no, seriously. And I mean, this is going to be a breakthrough to everybody in the industry. If they want to do it, I'll teach them how to do it for anything. Yeah. I love it. This is going to yeah. be great. Okay, so like, like, is that me again? Great. I hear kids. Who's who's there? There's some. <laughs> there is some kid in some room. Where is it? <laughs> Somewhere. Some is that is, is that? I heard that. Is that Carter? No, but he's <laughs> watching you. He said hi. Kids. I, I, I say hello. You yes. gotta say hi, Carter. <laughs> hello, Carter. Carter. By the way, Carter is an amazing kid. Uh, how old is he? Nine years old? Or, or no, not he, even nine. No, he's five. It's my nephew. He's, he, he's five I years old. But he acts like he's 15, and he's my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's right. been great, you guys. We go live twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Always new, great faces, different content. Please buy your ticket Sonia, at the Gadget Repair Expo and come see us. What is it, Tony? San Antonio, Texas. There you go. See us in San, Texas. San Antonio. San Antonio, baby. Everything, everything. Come to Texas. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Get her done. Right. Get her Okay, I'm gonna end. End it. <laughs> One. One. I'm clicking end. Right it's now. going. Okay.